All right, there are two types of sleeping bags. And by types, I mean materials of which they are constructed with. You have synthetic and you have down. Uh, there are goose down and there's duck down. Now there are a few differences between synthetic and down bags. Mostly, let's take this top bag here. This is a synthetic bag. And you can see how bulky it is. It takes quite a bit to compress this into a stuff sack because it's bulky. Not only is it bulky, it is also much heavier than a down bag. This, on the other hand, is a down bag. And this bag compared to the synthetic bag is much more compressible and it weighs less. For example, this synthetic bag is right at the 30 below zero. This is my expedition down bag right at the 40 below zero. However, this synthetic bag, which has a lower comfort level, weighs nearly six pounds. This down bag, which has a higher comfort rating, weighs nearly five pounds. So I'm saving a pound and a bit between the two bags. However, the synthetic bag is going to cost you much less than a down bag. Down bags, generally speaking, are much more expensive than synthetic bags, simply because of the materials that they are constructed with. Generally speaking, Synthetic bags, I would uh, use them for car camping, which means you drive up to your provincial or national park campsite and you set up your tent and away you go. Down bags are better suited for expeditions and backpacking simply because they take up less space and they're lighter. So they'll fit easier into your backpack because remember, you're the one who's going to have to carry that load for possibly days on end and many hours a day to get to your destination. So most backpackers and expeditions want down bags, which are lighter. However, you will have to shell out quite a bit more dough for it. Okay, just before we move on with the sleeping bags, I just want to discuss an ages long debate about sleeping bags and wetness. And a lot of folks out there say that if you have a synthetic bag and it gets wet, you will still be able to use it and it will keep you warm. And they'll also say that if you have a down bag and it gets wet, it won't retain any of its effectiveness to keep you warm. Well, I've been camping, backpacking, and mountaineering for nearly 40 years. And I can tell you I have never met anyone out there who can say they had a good night's sleep with any bag if it was wet, whether it's a synthetic bag or it's a down bag. But this I do know. If you find yourself having a wet bag out in the wilderness on the winter camping trip, you're going to quickly find yourself in a survival situation, whether you have a synthetic bag or a down bag. Folks, your trip's over. It's time to pack up and go home. Okay, let's talk comparisons. First of all, this bag is a synthetic bag rated to 30 below comfort. It weighs in at nearly six pounds. 
Uh, I purchased it for about $140. Okay, so $140 for a 30 below bag, that's pretty darn good. That's an economical bag. However, it is quite heavy and it is going to take up quite a bit of space in your backpack. Now, let's compare that to my Expedition bag. This is rated to 40 below comfort. It was custom made for me, whereby I had extra loft put into the foot of the bag to keep my feet warm while I was mountaineering in the northern mountainous cold regions of North America. However, this bag cost me nearly a thousand dollars nearly 30 years ago. But this bag is rated to 40 below comfort. And I'll tell you one thing. I had this bag on Denali and there was a night on Denali high on the mountain where we got socked in by a storm and the temperatures were nearly 30 below that was just the air temperature however the winds were howling at nearly 80 kilometers with gusts at a hundred kilometers an hour which drove the temperature down to near 60 below zero and i was in this bag in a four season true expedition tent and I had on me, I had my heavy down puffy jacket and down pants, down buoys, and a big balaclava. And folks, I was shivering. It was one of the worst nights sleep. It was so cold, the cheek butts were slapping together. That's how cold it was. But 40 below bag like this one quickly became a... 40 below survival rating in that case. I just mentioned that story to give you an example of how quickly the environment can change and how you have to adapt to it. All right, moving on to the next bag. All right. A lot of folks out there are going to recognize this bag immediately, especially those that are in the Canadian Forces or are veterans of the Canadian Forces. And this is part of the Canadian Forces sleep system, extreme cold weather. And this is one part of the system. This is the outer bag. It also comes with an inner bag, which goes inside this bag, which makes up two parts of the sleeping bag and it also comes with a flannel kind of like insert that goes in as well. So you have three little bags that go inside the outer bag. And that system is rated to about 40 below zero. And what I do when I go camping or I go backpacking is I usually take this bag. And along with this bag, I employ this bag here as well. This here is a, another down bag. However, this one is only rated to zero degrees Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit, whereas this outer bag is rated to 10 below. But if I combine the two of these like so now all of a sudden I have a sleep system that's probably rated to about 25 degrees below zero and this is what we call a modular sleep system over to your army navy stores and get one of these bags. This is a down bag as well. It's rated to 20 below. 
which is about 10 below comfort, 20 below survival. However, it is an outer bag of their system, and it's larger than the inner bag, which means you can take your three-season bag, which is smaller because it's the bag you get into for your three-season camping trip, and now you can actually get into this bag Stuff it in there and you will fit just fine into both bags now. And that's how you create your modular system using your current three season bag. So, for example, in terms of price, you can get one of these Canadian military bags, okay, which is surplus bags at your Army Navy store. And you can either get the entire modular system or you can simply get the outer bag and employ your own current bag. And there you go. This bag, give you an example on price, it goes for about a hundred bucks. You can probably get it on sale for about 80, 85 bucks. Use your own bag inside that bag and you're good to go. Know the extended forecast. Um, simply by doing that, you will be able to withstand some of the harsh changes that you may encounter out there, especially if you are in mountainous regions. And I can tell you from experience, even in July, when I was heading out into the backcountry in the Rockies, and I would set out, it would be nice, clear day, sunny, plus 20 degrees. And then all of a sudden, by nightfall, the temperatures would drop to near freezing. And if you're not prepared, like I said, it can turn into a survival situation. So always carry a little bit more than what you're going to encounter by looking into the extended forecast and preparing in advance. So let's say you are heading out and you know by the forecast that you're going to experience zero to minus 10 degrees Celsius weather. What I would do is I would prepare for minus 20 degrees out there. So instead of using this bag, your current three season bag, which is rated to zero and employing it with the military sleep system bag. I would purchase another down bag rated to minus 10. Employ that with the military outer bag and now you're good to nearly minus 30 below zero and you're going to sleep warm and comfortably and by the way this bag here is rated to minus 20 but it only cost hundred and forty dollars from Teton Sports and you can find this and on their website or you can find it on Amazon an excellent bag down bag rated to minus 20 employ that with the military bag you're down to minus 30 and now you're prepared for anything Mother Nature can possibly throw at you while you're out there. All right, so let's quickly recap. This top bag is my expedition bag rated to 40 below. It will cost you nearly $2,000 today to purchase. Think about that, $2,000. And you can only use this in extreme winter conditions. You cannot use this in any other season simply because you're going to be a sweat bucket in this thing. Now, the alternative. Another down bag rated to zero degrees Celsius. Cost $130. Down sleeping bag rated to 20 below. Cost 
150. Canadian Forces Outer Sleeping Bag, Down Bag, cost $100. You can get all three of these bags for one third the price of an Expedition bag. However, the good part about this modular system is that you can employ it year round depending on the conditions you're going to experience in the backcountry. All four seasons. And it's one third the price of an Expedition bag which you can only use in one season. And that's the beauty of a modular sleep system. All right, let's talk about options. Now, like vehicles, when you purchase a vehicle, you have options that you can purchase to go along with your vehicle. And the same holds true for sleeping bags. Sleeping bags also come with options. Now, some sleeping bags, when you purchase them, already have some of them or all of them in. Others, you may have to ask for them to put on or so on or whatever. However, some of them are things like Gore Windstop fabric, which is basically the outer shelly material. It's a fabric that uh, is, stops the wind and has some sort of water repellency, not waterproof. Uh, you have snag proof fabric just like that there that black strip which prevents the zipper from snagging when you're opening and closing it so it kind of like that so the zipper won't snag and that is an excellent option to have because I can tell you while winter camping and when you're in the dark trying to do up your sleeping bag or unzip it and it snags it's a pain in the butt to unsnag it and that's the truth uh, baffles let's talk baffles now there are neck baffles and of course there are zipper baffles and by baffles I mean material like this right here this here is a baffle and it contains down material and what that does is when you zip it up one of the areas where air or cold air I should say can get into your sleeping bag is through the zipper area okay and if you don't have this bag baffle air will seep through the zipper because there's nothing there to stop the air from coming in. The same holds true for your neck baffle, this baffle right here. So when you get into your sleeping bag, what you do is you get in and you have a draw cord right here. So you can just snag that draw cord and tighten this baffle around your neck so none of the nice warm air in your bag escapes through there. That's another important feature. Hoods is another one. For instance, this one here comes with a hood. A lot of sleeping bags don't. For instance, the military bag, this military bag does not come with a hood. But, like I said previously, I incorporate this bag with another bag that does have a hood. And now I do have a hood with my sleeping bag, although it is a modular system. <coughs> the same holds true for the hood. It also comes with a drawstring that you can tighten around your face. So you only have your nose and your mouth exposed to the air so that you breathe out you don't breathe into the bag that's one thing you never want to do is get in your sleeping bag and cover your entire body including head face and nose in the bag 
because all that's going to do is you're going to breathe moisture into your bag and it is going to be soaking wet. You want to breathe out. Don't breathe into the bag. Stash pockets is another option to have and uh, this feature is extremely important because in the winter your electronics are going to get zapped of energy because of the cold and what I normally do is I take my cell phone or my power bank or any other uh, like flashlight headlamp into my bag and if I've got stash pockets like this one here where I can put my phone power bank or whatever other electronics i have i always take that into my sleeping bag so it stays warm overnight if you leave those things out at night guaranteed they'll be dead in the morning well as you can see i've packed away all my bags uh, to demonstrate the packability of my bags these are all my down bags so we're going to start from the right here this is my down 40 below comfort rating expedition bag. As you can see, it compacts pretty well, weighs in at about five pounds, which is pretty much expected. Next, this is the military extreme cold weather outer bag, and it also packs down pretty nicely, and it has a comfort rating of 10 below zero. Over here, we have the Teton Sports 20 below comfort rating bag, also a down bag, and it comes in at about two and a half pounds to three pounds, which is not bad. And over here, you can see that this is the comfort rating zero below bag, also a down bag, and it packs down quite nicely. So the three of these make up my modular system, which I can employ year round. And this one, of course, is only for extreme mountaineering, cold weather, Arctic survival type bag. Now, I could not pack my synthetic bag into any of these bags simply because of its bulk. So you can see that bulk and weight is a factor when backpacking. So this bag comes in at about six pounds, comfort rating of about 30 below, but I only use that bag for car camping because it's too bulky and excessive weight. Now, as I stated earlier, it really doesn't matter if you have a synthetic bag or a down bag. If your bags get wet, it's not going to be much fun. Trust me, you will be in a survival mode. Um, so the industry has come up with many different items to try to keep your gear and your sleeping bags dry. One of the most effective ways is dry sacks, bags like these. Now, although these are very effective at keeping your gear, and your sleeping bags dry while they're in your backpack, they are fairly expensive. A bag like this one here will cost around $10. This one here is close to $20. And they can actually reach an expense of nearly $100 a bag if you choose so. So there are different alternatives to try to keep your gear and, and sleeping bags dry. And what a lot of people do is they simply use uh, those black garbage bags or contractor bags. Uh, contractor bags are probably one of the most effective ways because they are built tough. So to puncture them takes quite a bit. However, I have found a much better method you really don't need dry sacks. Enter nylofume bags. 
Now, I only recently discovered these bags, and I can tell you, um, after purchasing them, they are a godsend. These things are extremely tough. Back in the day, they were built to protect, uh, I believe it was medicines and food while homes were being fumigated. And... They are extremely, extremely tough, even tougher than contractor bags. Um, they're extremely waterproof and odor resistant. So if you wish to store your food in them while you're backpacking to keep the bears away, yes, you can do that as well and then just hang them off a tree. Um, I use them to put my clothing in it, my gear, my sleeping bags, to keep them dry. The other, um, Thing that you uh, have with these nylo fume bags that you don't have with stuff sacks or dry sacks or contractor bags is you can actually see what's in the bag so if you're searching for something in in the dark with a flashlight you will be able to see what's in your bag whereas contractor bags you cannot you basically have to pull everything out to get to the gear that you need nylo fume bags you can see exactly what you're looking for in them the other good part about these bags is the cost. I purchased four of these bags from a place out west. I believe it was Washington State, somewhere in the vicinity of the Seattle area. Um, you can just uh, Google it and uh, it'll take you to the website. And I purchased four of these bags for, I believe it was like four or five dollars US. So extremely cost effective and very durable. Also, I'm not sponsored and I'm not paid by any company or manufacturer to promote any of their items. All the items that you see me displaying in this episode or any other episode are solely my items bought with my own money that I have used in the backcountry, camping, expeditions, or whatever. And it's with real world trial and error out there in the wilderness. And what I try to do is I try to convey my experiences to you without any interference from any promotions.